Phyrexian Revoker, your Umazawa's Jite. Vince, Vince, Phyrexian Revoker, your Jite. Revoker, your Jite. Revoker, your Jite. Where are you, Vince? What's going on? Come back, Vince. We miss you. We have beans on toast. They finally did the Arena Economy stream. It was worse than we could have ever imagined. Vince, Arena's economy is still broken, Vince. $50 for a couple of wild cards, Vince. Vince, Vince, Vince. What's going on? You've been staring into the void for over half an hour now, and we're not even watching the Magic Arena economy stream. Are you okay? I hate to say it, Brian, but I'm getting a bit tired of us playing Magic, mate. What? But it's only game nine of the morning, and this is the Death and Taxes Mirror. Oh, Vince, you know how I love the Death and Taxes Mirror, and we've got to prepare for this eventuality at a possible GP. What's a GP? Anyway, you, you remind me how much you love this kind of thing in your daily newsletter that I didn't subscribe to, by the way, but it just feels pointless. It feels empty. <laughs> Dude, I, I, I still love Magic. Nine games is a lot. Can we just play something else for a bit? But it can still be magic related, right? Yeah, sure, whatever. Okay then, how about we play Redeem, Kill, Complete? Isn't that called, uh, Marry, Kiss, Fuck? Ah! It's the first minute of the video. It's not called that. Well then, what's that? You pick three magic villains and I have to decide which one I'd like to see killed, completed, or redeemed. It's the Planeswalker equivalent of kill, marry, and uh, kiss. Okay, fine, sure. Uh, Ashok, uh, Luca, and I'll give you Duretti. Oh, that's easy. Redeem Luca, kill Ashok, and complete Duretti. Wait a minute, Duretti? Yeah, Duretti. Duretti's not a villain. As everybody knows, Brian, Duretti threw someone out of a window as an act of vengeance, and the goblins burned the house down. He defenestrated a bigoted thief whilst in an act of valiant reclamation with a band of revolutionaries that lit the metaphorical and physical fires of popular revolt. He's an iconoclast. I don't know what iconoclast means. I don't know what defenestrated means. It means to throw a guy out a window. Exactly, he's a murderer. He's a freedom fighter. Apologize. Yes. Revisionist! Fine, let's agree to disagree and just move on. You you give me three. You're right, you're right. Hey, listen, I'm really sorry about that. Um, we're having fun. How about this? Tybalt, Tezzeret, and Sarkon. Easy. Kill Tybalt, redeem Tezzeret, and complete Sar Sarkon? Yeah, Sarkon, destroyer of Tarkir, Vol. You crazed fool! He didn't destroy Tarkir. Dragon Lords ruling the land, the erasure and rewriting of an entire plane's history, all at the whim of one dragon-obsessed madman? Whoa, whoa, the dragons had every right to live on Tarkir, much like all the other creatures. And are you insinuating that it was some sort of peaceful paradise when it was ruled by the non-dragons? Plus, need I remind you that the dragons were hunted to near extinction in that timeline, Brian? It's it's a dystopia now. Both timelines are dystopias. You're nothing but an apologist. You're just a revisionist. British. American. You take that back. No, you take that back. All right, I'm sorry, I went too far. No, you know what, I'm done. I'm done playing this dumb game. You're done? We're doing the same irritating things. We're doing the same mirrored actions. It's like we're playing the... Death and taxes mirror? <laughs> oh, you sly dog. I feel refreshed. I feel reborn. I feel reinvigorated and I feel I feel... Revoke your GT. God, this sucks. Hello and welcome to Dies to Removal, the Magic the Gathering podcast where Pleasant Kenobi and myself talk about all things Magic the Gathering and today we've decided we're going to fix Magic Arena. Isn't that right, Vince? That is right, yes. Two men who have never designed a game system in their lives or a digital product are now going to attempt to fix all the issues it has. I, I just figured someone <laughs> needs to. This is, we just said, you know, no one seems to be fixing Magic Arena. Why don't we do it? And so what we have done is we want to be fair to Wizards of the Coast here. And the instructions that I gave to Vince when I came up with this idea were write down five, did you write down five? Or I more than five. five. You're at five. You asked for five. I, 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 I wrote to, five. Hang on a second. There's like an interview thing where I asked for five. Well, I thought maybe you might have more, like, because they're probably like, more. I thought, like, oh, did you go above and beyond the five? No, I did exactly as minimal, okay, sure, minimal sure. effort that you asked it's just, for. We're talking problems on <laughs> Arena, and I figured maybe you'd have been like, I've oh, got, man, I filled this whole pad I've up. I got some sub clauses and bullet points. Okay, okay, cool. But the restriction was try and keep it within the realm of the reasonable for wizards. So, for example... 
Obviously, we might have something we have to say about the economy, but you need to keep it within what is more or less a reasonable action that Wizards of the Coast could take, not some wild socialist fantasy. Yes, this isn't the opening skit we did where we right. stood in front of a green screen with Wizards of the Coast employee shirts on. We right. just said random things that we all want to happen but never will. Right, right, it's right. So this are realistic, reasonable ways that we think Wizards of the Coast could improve Magic Arena that never will happen. Uh, Vince, do you want to go first? And of course, if he says something that's on my list, I'll let you know. Okay. So what, what was the first thing you wrote? So I have got older formats in capital letters. Ah. And there's a lot of caveats here because some of the stuff would not be reasonable for them to do. Sure. Like we can't just say they should stick vintage or legacy on there um, straight away tomorrow. Although, that's one of the bullet points I've got. What I've noted down here is Pioneer is the first one. They they have said there's a they've said multiple times there's a roadmap towards that, and they've most recently said it is coming very soon, supposedly. They don't even need that much to put Pioneer on there. That's the other thing. When mm -hmm. you make a list of all the sets that are in Pioneer, it isn't that long of a journey yeah. to just add the missing ones. They could add Pioneer today with actually some uh, somebody did a breakdown of the most played. Uh, staple cards in Pioneer yeah. that are not on Arena, and it's it's honestly like 30, well, you've, you've got, 60. You, exactly, and you've got to remember as well that we've had 30 or 60 or way more, I think it might be like 200 plus cards, uh, directly into Historic through and Historic Card Anthologies sure. and stuff, things that could have been, if they wanted it to be, the Pioneer Anthology stuff that helped us get to Pioneer very quickly, right. um, but they didn't. So there's there's got to be a reason for that. That's probably because of the Historic just seemed like a much more profitable way to take magic at the time. Right. So I've put Pioneer, and I then I've put Modern... Well, don't move on to the next one. No, it's one. not the same, oh, same it's point. the same one. It's your old, little sub Older formats. Okay, older formats, older formats right. And I think Modern fits into that as too, because once Pi Historic is now kind of at the point where they... If they're moving on to Pioneer, I believe that Historic isn't getting monetized or isn't able to be monetized any further than they're currently doing. So Pioneer is the next way to monetize the... the I'm talking about the realistic wizard's attitude here. Yes. Monetize via Pioneer. And Modern will be the, the next one, maybe a year or two down the line, when they're like, okay, we're moving towards that now because we can sell you more sets. I don't think Wizards of the Coast has had any trouble monetizing Arena, so that's not really the concern on my mind. This is about fixing what many people are feeling is a, uh, not broken, but improving what is a yeah. frustrating digital client at this point. No, I, I get the brief. Oh, yes. What I'm saying is... Oh, no, no, I just... I think it does fix the, the thing because we it want does. the older formats. I, I agree, and in fact, I wrote on my list... Okay. Now, I didn't write older formats. I wrote one-to-one -one Pioneer, meaning specifically, not just Pioneer, but keeping it one-to-one -one with paper because I think that that'll get a lot of people really happy with what Arena can do for them if there's a one-to-one -one paper non-rotating format. You need one paper non-rotating format that's one-to-one. -one. That means, and I wrote, I wrote this little note here, it says, don't F with it. Don't so, F with it, talking, no Pioneer Masters. Realistically, though. No, no so, Pioneer's so, Horizons. No, so Pioneer Masters is okay. So remember, the Masters products aren't adding anything new, they're just reprinting uh, stuff. Sure, sure, yeah, I meant so like with something new. Masters is the good new. one, but Horizons, Anthology. Keep it one to one to paper. But realistically, are they gonna do that? Or is it gonna be? Well, they might make that in paper. I would like that in paper. No. I would, no, 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 the first one. This is the Masters one. Yes. Pioneer Masters, a reprint set with a really cool draft environment that's RTR plus Innistrad. Master sets are fun. Master sets are fun. I don't want sure, Pioneer I, I Horizons. Sure, I can't wait for $19.99 booster packs yeah. of Pioneer Masters. But, quote, your reviews, I'm pretty sure I've seen this at some point when I maybe watched one of your videos. I'm pretty I sure- I have a YouTube channel? I'm pretty sure you even said, that for some of the set reviews of those things, that this would be an absolutely baller, a banging set if the price was lower. Yeah, but they're not gonna lower the price. And they're not gonna do Pioneer. <laughs> and they're not gonna do Pioneer without now, Alchemy because they want to force the right. Alchemy stuff we've seen going to Historic into Pioneer. So, with, so that's all the monkey paw, right? Monkey paw. Right. Pioneer is coming. I think they will first try to Alchemize it. Right. Maybe they get enough pushback that they don't. Then they Please, like, no Alchemy. So here's my th here's a theory. Absolutely a theory. Yes. Tin for a hat time. Uh -huh. I think they struggle or can't separate out the older formats within the client and the digital, like the coding of the program. Really? So the standard, which is like a card pool, they do card pool like bins, right. if you will. Someone in the comments can tell me if this is more realistic. I think the reason that Historic is Alchemy is just the easiest solution or it causes them less work. Mm. And I think to go back again using Pioneer with all this stuff plus more and then cutting out some of the Historic stuff, I think they may well struggle. So we might see it as a path of least resistance in the whatever's going on in the coding of Arena. Hmm, interesting. We'll come it, back it, to that in six yes, months. Yes, <laughs> yes, but it is interesting that you said older formats, because I actually made a second list. I made a second list that I didn't tell you anything about. He did go above and beyond. He's I did, and do you know what I called this list? 
I called it things we really need an arena but will never ever get. And on that list I wrote modern legacy and then triple underlined commander saying that yes, arena needs modern legacy and commander down the road, a roadmap to these things, but that I acknowledge that within my criteria of something Wizards is willing to do, you know, or, or can within the realm of possibility do, they're not gonna do it. And what's really depressing about this is, is that if they can put Pioneer on, they can put Modern on. And if they can put Modern on, they yeah, can put Legacy on. Energy, and if they yeah. can put Legacy on, they can put Commander on. But they're not gonna do those things. And when you compare this to the recent Yu-Gi-Oh! digital client this that awesome came next, live, yeah. and you go, oh, Legacy, it's too many cards. Freaking Yu-Gi-Oh! came out, out of the gates racing, with practically their entire card library, which is, synonymous with Magic the I Gathering. Think was, I think there's over 10,000 cards yeah. on release. And we're we, like, oh, we can't do modern. Yes, you can. We can't so, do Commander. <laughs> the other thing to that list of things is that, weirdly, I think we will see Commander at some point, but it won't be Commander as we know it. It won't be a four-player. It's multiplayer is the problem, right? We will see them, because Commander's a money sink for that. A, a, a right. money milk. Uh, yep. milk. Money milk. <laughs> Cash cow, that's the one I'm going for. Money milk cash cow. And that means that they will eventually evolve whatever the brawl is on the client right now into yeah. command. A 1v1, something in the command zone. Command tower is already programmed in, so on and so forth. It will happen, but it will not be the command that everyone wants, and they'll miss the point. They'll right. almost get up, they'll miss the point. Well, actually, we've tried, and I, I don't want to upset anybody who likes a 1v1 commander, because there was even 1v1, like 1v1 like commander. French. You like 1v1, one, yeah, like, yeah. Well, is that French competitive, or uh, what is that? Uh, there's loads of different versions of it. But yeah, yeah, there's yeah, a French yeah, one, there's one there's has a different That's the one the that Modo, I played. The Modo one has a different banlist as well. Right. Um, but yeah. It, it is. I, I personally didn't like it, and I know it's you know not every not every format is 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 going to make everybody happy, and that's why we have lots of formats we find what we like. But I do feel that most players will not like that one v one commander experience, especially as it does evolve. I think Brawl is actually working right now because it is a very limited card pool, and that as it gets more and more complex, that those complexities m are problems in one v one, which is why. On my list of things we need that we'll never ever get, I put multiplayer. Mm -hmm. Arena needs multiplayer yesterday. There is multiplayer, it's you, one other person online. Right. There's two people. Magic Online has multiplayer. I can play yep. Commander on Magic Online. The, the, the peak, old, the the old peak, duels. The peak of a four player right. Commander is a program that looks like it came out the in The old like duels client had a multiplayer, yep. remember that? That was Two-Headed Giant and everything yep. on there. Two-Headed Giant. They did not think when creating this program that multiplayer was something they should put in and now that it's been made and the people who made it are largely gone and now the people who are just keeping it churning and going are there. They know how to add things like add a new emote. They know how to do add, emote, all that stuff. But they can't, I, I'm under the impression from several things, I, I'd, I'd wager to bet that while not ultimately impossible, it's extremely unlikely that they even can yeah. add multiplayer. They haven't have the infrastructure to allow right. it in the future. They would have to do a major overhaul to have an, a multiplayer aspect to Arena. It's it, and, and the fact that they can't put it in there when multiplayer is the most played way You've to play their game. You've got to remember as well, like the Commander Boom wasn't after Arena was in development. It already happened. Right. So it's it's actually bizarre world that they managed to map out, plan, and make this right. program without How did, Commander. Like, like without like, and I don't want to just rag on, on, on Wizards <laughs> here. I really don't, but like, how did this happen that they so fundamentally missed the mark on their premier digital client that they didn't think a multiplayer option or even the infrastructure. Why didn't they even say to the people making this, hey, one day we might like to add multiplayer. Can you ensure that this would be an easy process for us to do? I, I've said this to you before. Which? And again, this is the Tim Fall thing again. One more Tim Fall theory and I'll stop with them for the rest of the episode. Yeah. But it's that idea that this the, the the groundwork must have been outsourced to someone who is not in touch with what's going on in Magic right now or doesn't even necessarily play Magic. Some other development team that has done this sort of project before and that was rigidly set in place and no one wanted to, because that's probably paid good I, I'm money also I'm also going to say, or someone just a few more levels removed at Wizards of the Coast yeah. was put in charge because once again, everyone that we know and all the wonderful faces that we know at Wizards of the Coast are largely, not entirely, but largely actually kind of lower level yeah. people at this company and that literally, I mean, I've, you know, 
uh, nobody knows who Mark Rosewater's boss is, but he's got one. Do you think the people who talk about Commander and make the Commander precons and talk to us about them on the on the streams, those people would not have missed right. the and idea so that he's Commander? Right, and so I think it's possible some executive or executives at Wizards stepped over and we're gonna make the digital, and yep. then they got their buddies or and friends. They've, out, they've outsourced and they're it to just, people and it, it's just they're just clueless. They don't know, they don't know. They're not, that's not their department, and so there you go. I think Multiplayer. The, that it's, is the biggest blunder though, right? right. Uh, we, we can't, even, there's no other way, but nothing else in Arena is a bunch like that. Yeah. Well, actually, I disagree because uh, we can talk about other things. Anyway, so you have already, Mr. Kenobi, I haven't even gotten to saying my one thing at the top. Uh, you have already named two things that were on my list of never going to happen. We're never going to get Commander or Modern, I feel, mm -hmm. and we're never going to get Multiplayer, even though all of those things, we need Commander. I do argue that in the same way we need Pioneer, getting Modern on Arena would be a great thing. And I do think, obviously, Multiplayer and Commander on Arena would be a great thing. But I do agree with you that Wizards of the Coast could very easily give us a one-to-one -one Pioneer. You make the point that they'll start monetizing it. Yeah, Pioneer Masters. I guess if they're not adding, I as any, everybody knows by now, I don't like made for Pioneer cards any more than I like made sure. for Modern cards. I don't like made for Commander cards. So I would be hesitant about Pioneer Horizons and or I, something like that. And I enjoy that. them, but I think the game would be better off if we didn't have them. Like, I like the Horizon sets. I am having so but much fun. the damage fun. that's been done to them. Yeah, I'm having so much fun in Pioneer <laughs> right now, and I'll be honest with you, because there's none of those, those Horizons cards or Commander cards. It's just... I, 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 God, I do sound like such a magic boomer, but it's just good, clean magic. It really is. It's just like playing in uh, Horizons is such a refreshing experience where I'm not worried about a one red drop monkey with, you know, eight pages of text below it. Mm -hmm. I'm just playing and Magic also, the Gathering. Defense, and it's a slight touch. In defense of the Horizon sets, the vast majority of the stuff in the Horizon sets is fun and good. Like, no one is upset about Thought Monitor, which is a card that is a staple now but doesn't upset anyone, which is just Mold Drifter with Affinity. No one gets upset by that. It is the handful. It is, well, I say handful, up to maybe around 20 cards per set. That just show up. So, like, the monkey is everywhere. Sure. It's been banned in Legacy now, but, like, I mean, a modern video of the other week, five rounds, all five of them were monkeys. And I was playing monkey too. So there's just eight copies of monkey. You can't eight. stop playing with your monkey. I can't stop playing with my monkey because it's so much better than everything else. Yeah. Anyway, that's just a thing. So Horizon sets were fine if they just... Oh, anyway. That's a whole other video. Well, so that could affect Arena if we see Pioneer Horizons. Right. Uh, should I go on? Since you did name one of my points, do I skip one and we go on to your second point? Or do I do a point? Oh, a game show? Do well, I but, get no, but I think... Like Battleships. I'm going to eliminate all your Battleships. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think that my next Deals. one is probably on yours. Mine... I, uh, just writing magic economy is too easy. How do they fix it? That's the thing, because the, the challenge was how within a reasonable realm, like you say to wizards, do they fix it? And this is what I came up with, uh, is a combination of two things. One of them is one thing that uh, uh, kind of, well, I mean, obviously I do think dusting should be on there, mm -hmm. but you said to me, and I, uh, I really agree with it, that Dusting doesn't have to be destroy your cards. Mm -hmm. Dusting could be I take five cards and I, I enchant them together to make one new card. So if I've got five commons, I can enchant them together to make one new common. It's yeah. not destroying them, it's combining them to create a new card yeah, yeah, yeah. and make a, a common wild card for five, you know, into the machine. It's like we've got a cauldron and we, we put five wild, mm -hmm. five five commons and we get one common wild you card. Or, is it Goblin with a big yeah, machine? Yeah, yeah right, right, right. So, something like that. Look what I've created, you know, something like that. That, but I think it needs more than that too, which I also think, and this is, again, Wizards is gonna hate to do this, but it's really just them hitting a dial, which is adjusting rewards slash prizes, both for free to players as well as pay to players, because I think both events, pay to play events have been getting stingier and stingier in their payouts, yeah. and free to play is like a joke. They're, they need to say, all right, let's just go really like crazy. If you're playing and like maybe you're gonna make it top heavy so a lot of people enter and if they're not winning, they're not getting a lot back. I don't know, you play around with the dial but what you want is big payouts. Either big payouts across the board or big payouts at the top or a little bit of both and you need much more in the way of gold-centric events, gold-centric prizes, things like that. Uh, honestly, I hate gems and gold as two yeah, different types. Of, two I, different I personally, types that's, but I don't think they'll do that. That's not on here. So within what they'll do is I would say, all right, you are going to add a form of dusting. You say, it's sad when we break up our magic cards. And that's the real reason. And we're not lying to you like an evil corporation that is just going to say whatever they think they can say to get you, the consumer, to shut up. No, it's not. It's not that that's what they believe. It's that they genuinely think people would be sad to have to tear up 
for commons just to make one new common. But imagine a world where they stop praying Wrath of God and Doom Blade and Bolt because yeah. destroying the opponent's stuff is bad. Um, I hate to go on excitedly about Yu-Gi-Oh yes. again, but this is, the full details are not full off, so someone in the comments can flesh this out, but the anecdote goes like this. They had an event, and the prizes for winning and losing were very close, if not the same, and people were just going in and auto-conceding to get the losing prize. So their reaction was not to remove the losing prize, they just put the winning prize up. So everyone going to that event could, could, could step in and concede they won't get their points if they really want to, yeah. or they incentivize playing the game and winning. And it's just that attitude is something wow. that I wouldn't... I don't know, I've on them too much, but I just can't imagine that being the arena attitude. Yeah. If people were like manipulating the system like that, they'd remove this part instead of giving you more than the other part. Yeah. Full detail, someone can comment, but I think that was I think that was a good thing. Although, to be fair, the, the app is new and they might be doing these things to get goodwill and then later on it becomes predatory. That could be a thing. That's the thing, but we can't speak to that. We can only yeah. speak to what we see now. So, yeah, but I also prizes. speak to, the reason why, though, I do point out things like Yu-Gi-Oh, uh, and you're right, Maybe three years from now, Yu-Gi-Oh is not giving their app any support, whatever. Mm. But the fact that they could do it means wizards could do it. The fact that like people say, oh, you couldn't possibly. Do you realize what an undertaking putting 10,000 cards on Arena would be? And it's like, well, look, this other company that had no previous thing just came out the gates running and with I, it. And I also really want to, uh, this is going to upset some people, I think, but I really want to get onto this fact that Putting 10,000 cards into Arena sounds like this big undertaking, right? But if you have a team to do it, you can do it. Because people create entire new worlds for sequels to video games. People create expansion packs where you go to a different planet with yeah. visual assets that are 3D, with sound assets and new voice lines and all sorts of stuff. And most of the new Arena cards don't have any animations or voice lines anymore. That's nope. what they've stopped doing. I so, predicted that that would fade away. Yeah, yeah. That was the thing I almost talked about in one of my points. It comes out at the end. Yeah. But um, yeah, you can make expansion packs with brave new worlds and all sorts of stuff. And they're like, oh, we can't code how landfall works or how dredge works right you can yes, if you have you coders to do it right it's not the undertaking that they pretend it is so some of that money they're making a lot of money they're making money hand over fist they're making apparently like bags full of money spend some of that money to hire more people and pay them above what the industry so rate is or budget. maybe just pay the industry rate because Wizards is famous for paying below industry rate because you get the pleasure of working on Magic the Gathering. Mm. Isn't that a great reward? So we don't have, we won't pay you industry rates, but we will pay you below industry rates and then we'll also let you work on Magic cards. I met a dude who worked for Budweiser, and he said he took a pay cut to work for Budweiser because it's working for Budweiser. Why would Budweiser? Exactly, there's two points to that. Firstly, cool beer, but secondly, Budweiser? No, it's not <laughs> Budweiser. Budweiser isn't beer. Maybe in the UK we have a more popular look at it because of the cool adverts. What's up? You have those adverts here? We have what's up. up. No, the adverts where they all said what's up. The screen character going, what's up? We have what's up. The Iguana going, what's up? I've said what's up. What's up? I've said what's up. But it was that Budweiser. I don't drink Budweiser. No, I, I, I would never dude, drink a dude, Budweiser. I don't consume a lot of the things I see adverts for. Yeah. That's not how that works. I liked, anyway. I, I liked Dogfish Head until they got bought by Sam Adams. I don't Boo. know. Dogfish Head. My wife heads. and I had our wedding anniversary at the Dogfish Head Brewery. Dogfish Heads? Yes. It, 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 it was previously an amazing brewery. What I are really their adverts liked it. like? They didn't need to advertise. The beer was so good. But what do the adverts look like? They must have adverts. They, I never saw an advert in my life. I just knew the beer was good. Interesting. From other beer snobs. You don't drink Budweiser. I haven't seen them adverts, but you do drink fish dog head. We used to brew beer. Did you know that? We used to brew beer. Oh, you and your love. Yeah, me and Christine used to brew beer. We were, why, why didn't you do that next Kickstarter? Profs. We stopped brewing beer. Profs beer. Profs beer. We stopped I mean, brewing beer. Like, what yeah. the? I don't even drink beer that much anymore. Oh, that's God's why. sake. Some people in the comments tell me I'm not going insane. Yeah. The Budweiser advert was an iguana calling someone up on a phone going, an what is that? An iguana? The... Yes, an iguana. In a, what in is an in iguana? An, igu an iguana? Oh my God. An iguana. An iguana. Well, <laughs> I'll get that with my guacamole. Guacamole? What do you call it? Guacamole? Guacamole. Guacamole. Like, do, you know, do you know what I'm going to be... Ah, whatever. Right, my second one right, is... So do, you didn't have dusting. You didn't say dusting. Nope, no dusting. Wow, did you... Uh, okay, what's your second one? I've got one about the economy. We'll come to that later. My second one was going to be about animations and stuff, but I changed it as, as we sat down. I've written down the word gladiator. Right? All right, you that's the on there format? already. It's on there, but it's not a supported thing. You don't Gladiator is an awesome one. I have a video all about how to get playing in Gladiator, what it is. It's an amazing, fun fan-created format, and you know those fan-created formats like Freaking Commander often are really good, as opposed to those other non-fan-created formats like Brawl. Tiny Leaders. No, Tiny Leaders was fan-created. Oh, no, you're saying not one. Anyway, Gladiator. 
is a, a singleton 1v1 it's game awesome. with tournaments and stuff. Uh, Benjamin Wheeler has been championing it for a very long time. My point would be, it's not that they take control of it and take it away from people like God, Benjamin no. Wheeler. That would be awful. Do what they did with Commander and be like, you're the rules committee, have some more people, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, I think they've made some steps towards that with paper, but I want to see it on Arena as a ladder that you can play. The idea of playing a good singleton format on Arena in a ladder gets me more excited than Pioneer to yeah. an extent. So I quite like Historic, but Singleton Historic is... I, I love Highlander formats, basically. Right. So I think I Gladiator too. with the tournament structure, a couple of events, a ladder, but keep it in control of the community members that have started, like Benjamin Wheeler, I think would be just leaps and bounds towards not only giving you more things to do that are fun, but accessibility too, because then people who haven't got the wild cards for a playset of every rare land and stuff like that can start to play things that are also commander adjacent in a way. I think Gladiator would be nothing but healthy for the... But would they add alchemy to Gladiator Alchemy? Would they add like a historic Gladiator oh, I Historic? Or they... You see, the problem no, is, is everything it, no, they Gladiator touch... Gladiator is historic. Gladiator they is historic. You know King Midas? Alchemy. You know King Midas, who everything he touched turned to gold? The Magic Arena team. <laughs> it's like King Midas only... What's the opposite of gold that's that we can't say? It's like... Well, we can't say that. So everything they touch turns into an alchemical set. Everything like they a, touch just turns to, to mud. To mud. Oh, to mud. Smelly mud. The opposite of gold on the periodic table is... Mud. Mud's not on the periodic table. It's an element. You got tons of it in England. Yeah, we have tons of it in England. That doesn't... Hang on, hold, hang on. Your logic is it's, it's an element because we have tons of it in England. Yeah, is we that, have that how elements work? Do you, have, do you have oxygen in, in, in... We have more monarchs in England than you do. Monarchs are a great mechanic. But is it on the periodic table, Brian? Uh, it's in conspiracy What's your third and... one, Brian? Okay. <laughs> second one, even. Uh, my second one is uh, uh, that we need to overhaul the social features, friends list, uh, okay. messaging system, all of that, the whole thing. Um, I understand people have had a problem on Magic Online where you get put into a chat and someone starts mouthing off at you mm -hmm. and, and it's very unpleasant and unsettling. The solution isn't no social features mm -hmm. in a social game. We need to bring the gathering to Magic Arena and part of that means social features, but at the very least, least their friends list is just terrible. Yeah. The system is terrible. I've tried to do and I won't do it. Uh, I've tried to do things where it's like, oh, get arena games with people in my Discord and stuff, and it's such a painful, annoying process. Try doing that during a live stream where you don't have five minutes to go, oh, wait, what's your thing? What's this? What's this? Set up a thing, play Gladiator. It's such a pain in the butt, and they need to do a major overhaul and improvement to things like the friends list. It feels list. 10 years old. It feels like something right. that was not designed to even work this way. And, be true. quite frankly, they do need to have a system where, no, I, maybe I don't want messages to start coming up in a game, but I do want a way where if it is someone that I've added to my friends list that I want to be able to message, yeah. I want that option. I want the options in there. We need social features and an improvement to the social features that we have. And obviously with an eye towards uh, harassment and they're not being yeah, harassment. So on the topic of chat, I don't think chat is necessarily a bad thing. Again, it's because there's gonna be some bad actors. I've had so many positive experiences on Mojo. That People being like, I love your content or that deck you're playing is sweet. Hey, yeah. deck list, stuff like that, right? That happens. The, the reason we don't have a chat is because if you had a chat and you had to have a report function of people who are being the bad the bad apples, you then have to have people who then review right. those reports and it becomes a thing that costs money. So instead of doing that, they just gutted the whole idea of concept out. There should be something like this where you yes. can talk to your opponents. And yes. it also helps to grow a community. Right. And there's nothing like that on that. Right. And I think a lot of people initially, and I, th I might have been one of them, I don't know, like because I definitely didn't like things like I, I, I remember one legacy game where somebody was mouthing off at me in chat. I had it open and, and it, it was just, it was, it was just a private game, but it, it did actually like even bother me. And I was a little like, okay. kind of put me in a bad spirit. And, and you know, some people can laugh at it. A lot of people can't. And I totally get that. But I think that the initial reaction is, hey, we're just not going to have chat. And it's like, yay, I don't have to deal with this problem. But, but there's still problems, though. There's still we problems. We still get people being and, roped. We right. still get the spamming of emotes. And we get oh, a lot of God. arguments about good game before it yeah, is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But let's go, like, actual roping is genuinely damaging people's time. Right? Yes. And the others, you could argue, are less important. But none of those things can be reported. There's no report function. Right. You cannot stop people from doing these things. No one gets reported. No one gets told off. Right. As far as I understand it, please correct me if I'm wrong. No, no, I, and I think that's ridiculous that yeah. there's no report button, so, that there's no system <laughs> so they're just of stripped complaint. all out. Oh, right. we need a report function because there's no chat. People are still roping you. People are still upset that you've cast your whatever. You shouldn't even be able to rope. <laughs> well, it's where you, and that's the thing, in, in Modo, I've I had I missed the chest clock. 
I do miss the chess. I, I like the chess clock. I also like time out a lot. In Modo, someone has people have done that before. Sorry, got answered the door. And I'm like, that's reasonable. That's why they're all AFK. Yeah. In, in Arena, you start thinking, are they are they opening me on purpose? Right. Have they had to answer the door. Like, chat's nice. Talking to other human no, beings. No, you is need nice. to figure out how to do it. But like, the, but at the very least. A friends list. Where I should be able to to say. I should be able to say, hey, you know, let's set this up, and then we have social features with people on my friends list. I should be able to add people easily. Not, you know, to that list. I should be able to challenge them with games. I think and where the games I've got bad. more more. Uh, why can't I set up? You know, uh, 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 better. You know, presets and saves yes, and yeah. things like That's that. That's the bit I have issue with. The yeah. friends list has got to a point where it's actually functional now. Uh, the last time I looked at it a few months ago. Actually, challenge someone to a game though, where it like, defaults to certain things. Like mm -hmm. I have on several occasions loaded into like a one v one. Oh, sorry, what best of one instead of best of three. Yeah, and stuff like that. Yeah, uh, but that's also a problem on ladder itself. Ladder right. itself, as people know, will default to weird things, <laughs> and you're just like, why am I now? You'll play a game, you'll play a whole game, your rank won't go up, and somehow because you change deck, you're now back in the unranked queue. Right. So that's a problem that isn't even unique to what we're talking about. It's a wider problem within arena. Yeah. Yeah. All right. My next one. Hit me. Okay, this one is a wider magic thing as well, but it specifies an arena. It's some form or some way of cross-promoting either store play or paper oh. play. And we've touched upon this in another episode. I don't know if it comes out before this one or right. after it, but there was an incentive once upon a time that if you bought Jewels of the Planeswalkers for PlayStation, Xbox, or PC, depending on which one you bought, you went to a store and you picked up an in-store promo with a code. So you got a free card for buying a game. And one of those was Scavenging Goose. It was a really premium card at the time, $40, I believe. And what that did was people who'd never played physical magic would go into a store, like right. you said, and they'd see product to be mesmerized and flip reverse it. People who play paper will try out Jaws of the Planeswalkers. It's kind to of like a win-win, except yeah. for the cost of making the promo, but it could be minimal. And that, this could be anything. We talked again, spoiler for the other one, a little bit about how this could be incentivizing people to get high on ladder. Because if you're in Mythic, you get yourself a lovely effect. Imagine getting a fetch land promo. Right. Imagine like a prismatic vista or even fatal passive for standard that would or skull yeah. and so, mythic. Yeah, and Imagine so the that. idea is is that now this this next part, this next part requires th things like GPs coming back or at least magic fests coming back and being frequent and all over the the world like they used to be. But if magic fests came back or GPs specifically and they were frequent and all over the world like they used to be, then wizards could offer prize redemption at the the places where you would go in and then you'd have like a, a card or a number that is is basically all the wins that you had at your local game store, the ladder, whatever, and there's prizes you could redeem it for yeah. and they would have. The other it tie into the prize wall system yeah. that we used to have at GPs. Yeah. I always wish the prizes from each GP could, so you could go to three GPs in a row and finally get your big giant card, because grinding one big card in one yeah. event is very hard. It could tie into that. And I also, I hate to say this because this is actually a, a, a much more realistic idea, but like, if they tied it to, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, but if they tied it to secret layers, where instead of having to go to a GP, because someone goes, well, there's no GP by me, or they ran out of the promo. Why do you do in the post? So the thing is, well, well you, you, they used to mail you cards in the post for free, uh, but then they stopped doing it because it was expensive. Yeah, 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 so now rewards. you make the person pay four ninety five to have it done, but they already have a system in play of direct to consumer. So what they do is, is when a secret layer is going on, when you purchase a secret layer, you can cash in your points, and incentivize the sales of secret layers, and then they'll throw, and then you've got that off of there. But then it's it's called let's screw the local game store and cut out GPs and and just do it. But at the very least, it's some form of paper prize support. You know, it's funny. I actually put that on my list of things on my list of things that we need that we'll never get because what I put is uh, having either set redemption slash digital codes slash arena redemption in paper. I uh, want to tell people what redemption is. I feel like a lot of people watching this may not know. Sure. Well, yeah. that's be it, it exists today. It so is Magic on Magic Online. Online. When you complete a set, so you have one of every single card of Throne of Eldraine, for example, or whatever the latest set is, you can then click a button, you pay like 10 bucks for the postage, they remove it from your account, and then you get it posted out to you. And you do that for foils as well, which then makes the foils or the promo versions online worth more. be worth more, which then kind of emulates how real life works. And set redemption is has been a popular thing for a long time. People love it. it people will be scrambling for to get cards out of packs that no one's playing, non-set right. staples. Gives them a bit of value. It's fantastic. It's a, it's a good scheme. I it really is. Like and, a, and it's, it's a nice way to f not feel like, what if... They say that they added historic so that you had some place to play with your old rotated out cards. 
And what if I don't want to play historic? What if I only draft or play standard? You, you what do I do with things those? Won't happen, right? I don't think they'll okay, ever yeah, do it. I and the same thing. I uh, but I included in that it wasn't just set redemption. It was things like a digital code in every pack of magic cards for for arena. A digital code in every uh, pioneer. Masters That's more deck. likely to happen than the, so. no, than the redemption. They won't do it in the brawl decks. They won't give no, no, a no, magic arena. I'm not, yeah, I'm not saying yeah. it's likely. I'm saying it's more likely, more likely than the redemption. Than redemption. The reason that the problem that redemption won't happen is because it takes cards out of your collection and takes you off the client. They want you to stay. Yeah. And it's the um, sunk cost fallacy. Right. I've got cards here. I spent time here. Yeah. I should stay in. But I think what you just described, I agree with you 100% that it's needed, but I think that that would be what you just described on my list of they won't do it. I no. don't think they want they to they won't do I can play the ladder and redeem a fetch land at a GP I, they won't do I can sign up to get an arena package but only at my local game store where I get a paper promo and then see the game store they don't the, the, the arena only cash only no gold no gems like that's that's all they're doing it's it's such just one dimensional but greed. there's another argument that's just they can get people to buy in twice yeah so. no I agree that's three dimensional greed <laughs> I don't have a problem with Wizards as a corporation being greedy. I just want them to have a little three-dimensional greed. Digital, online paper, buying in multiple places. Like, like, let's get this thing going here. Brian, they're releasing so many paper secret layers this year. Right. That's the paper greed for you, my right. friend. Um, my next one was, is it me or you next? It's you. Less mini rotation and predatory stuff is what we've written. <laughs> oh. on the nose. We were supposed to say realistic. <laughs> realistic. So I want to see them, so... I want to see them peeling back on um, altering cards and adding cards <laughs> to Historic every like two weeks. Because yeah, we have like an right. anthology, a normal set, then we'll have uh, the anthologies ad adopt it again, and then we'll go on to the next set, then we have an anthologies, and there's so much stuff. The, the, the turnover, the churn of stuff going to Historic has been hilarious because Modern and Legacy have had these problems uh, of artificial rotations introduced. Historic is just that like on a turbocharger. Um, so yeah, I'd like to see less of that, but I do agree of my five, that's probably the least likely. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, I mean, I agree with that, but I don't think that's going to happen. So you it's, didn't it's write so down hard. less predatory stuff? I, 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 I wrote it down under things that will <laughs> never happen, but I, I don't think that that's realistic oh, that they do that. We should have done that. five things you want to see happen that is realistic, five things you think are unrealistic, and see how many we've got on yeah, each other's yeah, other yeah, lists. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, well. well, I put this under realistic. You tell me what you think. A major UI overhaul and improvement, like things like the deck builder, things like your collection manager, things like you know, uh, even just the deck collection system. A a in all honesty, the the while the interface is pretty spiffy for when you're playing, the interface is not so spiffy everywhere else. Yeah. Things like even just seeing what events are going on and selecting what event you want to do. Yeah. All of that is really basic and starting to buckle under the growing complexity. It's almost like they didn't expect Arena to ever grow and it was intended at its inception as a duels-like basic product that would come and go and then at some point along the line, it was decided Premier and Digital and Esport was gonna be the push, but the original inception and the original thing they wrote and planned out for Arena just got made and they said, put it over there in the spotlight, but gosh, there's no way to prove that, there's except a, that there's no multiplayer on it. And, and This is my second time mentioning this in an episode of this yeah. show. There's a video by H. Paul McGuire about right. Deus Ex, yep. and in that image is that um, Adios Montreal write up all of their like, design notes on a wall, right. and they were almost unfaltering about going back and changing anything as they made the game. So they planned it out, three or four years of development, and they did everything as they noted, and yep. that made some problems for the game, so they did things incorrectly. This is what I picture for Arena. Yeah. They had this plan, even like the end date of it might have been already, oh, we'll, we'll, we'll maybe toss and burn it after yeah. five sets like they did with Jules of Planeswalkers yeah. 2020 or whatever. Um, 2020? When was the last Jules? Duels stopped halfway through Amonkhet, if I recall. Halfway like, through. like they did, and, and the big thing, and this is what makes me nervous, arena players, I don't really think they'd go this far, but a lot of people on duels got kind of screwed because yeah, they had bought there gold. There's actual microtransactions. Right. You there were monetary transactions. Money. They had bought gold on uh, duels, and then it was very little warning because we were halfway through Almond Cat. If I, now I might, if I'm wrong on this, because we're just sitting here casually talking. If I'm wrong on this, that it wasn't halfway through Almond Cat or they completed Almond Cat, I apologize. But I am pretty darn sure it was halfway through Almond Cat, and they just were like, "Yeah, we're we're done. 
We're duels is dead. And 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 it's then it's so like, wild. but I just put fifty bucks into coins or something. And it's funny because like duels, if people don't know, the the, the duels games before that, duels games before that were not microtransaction heavy. They were like originally it was it was true free to play where yeah. there was no way to buy anything. It was a progressive anything. game system with a little bit of storyline. You unlock some decks and some new cards for them. Right. It was just a self-contained video game. Yeah. And they went to the microtransactions and buy packs model, like a Hearthstone light almost, and in duels the last one, that twenty whatever yeah, Amonkhet yeah, yeah, yeah. one, and then everyone was the next one. And so I, I can see yeah. why you're suspicious. And I, and, and what I think is, is they said, we want to make duels, but it's got full standard on it. That's what their their orders were. Their orders were, what if, because duels didn't have full standard. It, it just had, I don't believe it had full standard. No, you might be right. Yeah. I, I didn't play the last, the market drive actually. It's, it was a I long time ago. I'm pretty it. sure duels didn't it. have full standard. Like and it. what they wanted was they said, we should have like duels with full standard and updated things. And they said, all right, let's drop duels. And we're going to bring in this other team. We're going to do this thing. And it'll be able to be like adding the cards in for like five years and this. And that's all it was. It's just going to be how you play standard online. So they're going to drop arena and say, we want you to play modern. We want you to play more on the next version. So they, they kill Arena. Right. And we get MTG Mythic. Right, MTG Mythic, Magic Mythic. Yeah. And uh, yeah, and then I think that somewhere along the pipeline, all the esports hype got to the right people and the right executives, all the digital stuff, everything. And quite frankly, the early responses to what Arena was was being were very positive. I flew out on my own dime because I wasn't invited to that one and only Hascon. What a great name, Hascon. Sounds like like some kind of sounds nefarious. Dubious. Yeah, yeah, it sounds dubious. Not in cult. Road Freaking Island. Uh, and I played like the alpha of uh, Arena and I was blown away and I said, and I didn't believe them. We didn't think at the time they could, they didn't have instance. We didn't think that it would be able to handle instant speed spells and the, 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 the developers were there assuring us there will, you're going to have instance, you're going to be able to do in response, you're going to be able to do all that stuff. It's just not in this, they only had two decks and they were very careful about we're in them and I was like, if this was, and they said it's going to be full standard. And I said, there's no way. And they said, it's going to be full standard. And I was like, if this is full standard, it's the biggest thing ever. And I literally even had at that event, I made a tweet out and I was like, Arena is, is more than you could imagine based off of this. It's amazing. And that day, Elaine Chase, who's uh, like the vice president of Wizards of the Coast, walked by me and she goes, hey, thanks for that tweet. And I'm like, yeah, thanks for Arena. It's amazing. And I did all these videos early on that now I'm really guilty. Changed. Yeah, I know. Well, wow. they still didn't like me then, but she at least liked the tweet. But like, uh, and I wasn't uh, even being paid for it. I didn't get paid for the no, fight either. No, I paid for that. I, I felt that as a magic creator, it was kind of like, and as the biggest at the time and everything like that, I felt like I you should go and see what's going on. Yeah. And so I went out there just to be there and I paid for the ticket and everything. And and uh, my first several videos on it, they wouldn't even let me in the beta. They wouldn't even give me a beta. You yeah, needed a code get a to get in the arena. And I asked for one, they wouldn't give me a beta code. They wouldn't let me in the beta. And I was making videos about how excited I was for arena, not because I wanted to be in the beta, but I really believed in it. And I remember when I heard that there was no trading for the first time, and my heart sank. I remember that announcement. So when was... there would be no trading, and I made a video begging them to reconsider that this is trading is so important to the Magic the Gathering experience, to not do this extremely greedy economy, to just do a regular greedy one, or to have, or at the very least, and in that video I said some form of dusting. Now I put on things that I think will never happen, trading, but that- No, no that'll never happen. They'll never happen. Yeah, man, I remember hearing, maybe it was your video I might have seen yeah. about the lack of trading. And I remember thinking, oh boy, this might just be another duels back then. Right. And then they, I feel like they've proved me wrong, but there's the historic example of what they did to duels. But yeah, because duels was a self-contained game in itself, not not yeah. the new client. Right. And this was meant to be the new client. They're like, oh, but it's not magic. You can't trade. And right. Like, oh, oh, um. Okay. Scary yeah. stuff. Scary and stuff. And that's that's where. And I I feel. I think I, I don't even remember. What's funny is we've had so many conversations. I don't even remember which ones were on camera and which were off. But I remember that uh, you asked me at one point. Do you think that we as creators should have been harder on arena and secret layers early on? And that we both felt like with that Arena, was camera, because yeah. I was a big, I was actually really surprised. There was a, a, a friend of mine at Wizards of the Coast at the time who was who was grumbling about one of my Arena videos. And I was like, it's a really positive video. I, I'm really excited for Arena. I was just poking fun. Like, they, they, God, they can't take a joke. Like, I was just making some jokes in it because I try, you know, because I want my videos to be entertaining and not yeah. a stale, yeah. boring presentation. So there was like a whole thing and I, I had like the silly music going and I was like, don't do that. And, and this. 
this, and and they were just like, oh boy, everything's a joke with you. I was like, geez. I said I love Arena, but I wonder if I should have been much more skeptical, much more vigilant, much less, but I love magic, and I hated magic online, and I was so happy, so genuinely happy, playing that thing and imagining playing standard and, at the time, modern, on it, and I was just like, this is gonna be the greatest thing ever, we gotta support it. And I was so excited, and the first sign was when they said, no trading, and I went like this, and then the second was when they said, it will only ever have standard mm. and bot draft. They said, we'll not oh, even have- Oh God, yeah. yeah. I mean, well, that's something we should talk about as a positive, really, I forgot about bot draft, is that once upon a time you couldn't draft with other human beings, right. and they got there in the end. Kicking and screaming, we they had to did. drag them they through did. the door. And maybe we'll be saying this in a couple of years' time about Pioneer, or... Yeah, we have to drag or, them kicking or, and screaming we're through touching the... touching like modern or something, right. you know? Do you think that this is one of those cases, in case this is published after they've already gone back on it, where the $50 yeah. for wild cards, <laughs> the intention is we want to sell them for twenty four ninety five. People complain, say we're selling it for $50, then when they complain, drop the price to twenty four ninety five, and everyone will shut up. I think up. they will drop the price. I don't know whether there's intent there. I really don't. I don't think they will drop the price. Or if they do, they won't drop it much. They'll drop it to thirty nine ninety nine. They can't drop it much because they don't want to lose out. Okay, what is a good price? It's hard, isn't for it? For that, for that little. For, for is it tw it's twelve rares and four mythics. Nine ninety five. And that's quarter of mo that's literally quarter of a standard deck for people at home. You're wondering what that equates to. Quarter of a standard deck. A quarter of a standard deck. Okay. On a digital client, standard you can't deck. trade on or get off the money up, back out. Yeah, sure. Just, okay, on a digital client where you can't trade or get your money back out, a standard deck forty bucks. So that's a quarter of a standard deck. Nine ninety five. Yeah, and even then, and even then, think about this: if you would talk to a friend outside of Magic. Like, you bought a deck think it was a digital crazy. game for $40, that's the price of another game. And I'm still thinking, yeah, seems reasonable. So even then, we're crazy. Even then, we're in franchise enough to spend more money on a deck than most people spend on a AAA video game. Yeah. And even then, that's actually crazy because it's less, what's that, a two, 420% increase from Should what you're saying? Should a standard deck on Arena cost you more than the new, you know, PlayStation game? or less than the new PlayStation game. I think cost you, it should cost you less, but it currently costs you uh, th three quarters of a Nintendo Switch. <laughs> how are like, people, how, much is a how are you Sorry. playing this? It's American how money. are you playing it's American Arena? Money. How much to Switch in America? $300. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, 200, yeah. So two thirds of a Switch is one standard deck. And a rotation's coming, friends. Yeah. <laughs> my fifth one. All right, hit me. And this is probably quite unlikely. It was not my most unlikely one, obviously, but it's quite unlikely. Is that monetization is slowly moved? It's slowly <laughs> moved. Listen to me. Shut up. You child. Listen. No it's way. slowly moved to cosmetics and stuff. <laughs> my bullet point underneath, though, is why not both? Because that's their yeah, attitude. Yeah, there right? you go. Okay. Why not both? But um, add I would cosmetics. Love it. Add cosmetics. No, no, not adding them. As in, like. So is it weird that we still can't like buy the board we want to play on yeah, yet? Is that, is that very weird? That is yeah. very strange. No, I don't not think they have the capability. Money. No, exactly. Oh, technology. Oh, like, technology. Because like TFT, which is the Teamfight Tactics of the League of Legends auto chess game, yeah. and Runeterra, the League of Legends card game, both of those monetize skins for your characters, skins for your sleeves, for your cards, and the board itself. Yeah. And in TFT, a little character that runs around, which is your pet. So they do pets and stuff. And what have we got? Pets and, and sleeves? And those really obnoxious, uh, special, like, I guess the emote-like things. With yeah, the... which is a literal rip from any Riot game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but with less options, less... worse interfacing. And, and only an infantile. Like, one of the things I really don't like is that it's very, and again, different, you know, like, different, like, preferences for different people in terms of aesthetics, but there's this infantile, aspect to it where it's like magic what about kind of like like lean into the cool and the this and it's like it's all going down into this real low res cartoon of like you know this and, that's, and because silly that's, and that worked for riot that's yeah, what that is that is a copycat of them i, I just that, i feel crazy. like everything's getting really you know like like kind of babified in terms of like the, the level I of agree. artistic I want expression the pets. i want the pets to be really grim dark no, i want, they, yeah. want urza's severed head that's one of the pets I want in Arena. I want Urza's severed head. Right. Uh, okay, 
Vince, I, I but anyway, we'll, on the add cosmetic side the, of add things, add that to the list. Cosmetics <laughs> of things. But never, why would they, they? They would never switch. They never would do no, that. No, they do both. But like, they, they aren't even monetizing it correctly right now because because no. your avatars are so basic, they're not worth buying anyway. There's only really? there's only like four of them that you can buy, isn't there? Or like maybe ten. There's like one yeah. every set. I don't, I don't know. Um, these could be animated. Those can have you have Chandra, and you could buy a skin for her to be dressed to kill Chandra, which changes her voice lines like right. you have in League of Legends. I buy skins in League of Legends. I could have played the whole game free to play since I started playing it. Yeah. I don't. I spend the money because I don't feel like they're trying to rip me off by right. trying to sell me a skin that is completely optional. Same for boards, same for music, same for card sleeves. Same if you really want to get into it, I'll be happy if you have no animation on my cards so I can play them without it and sell me the animations if you really want to get into it. Because I think the play pieces, I've said this for everything, right? Lands should not be as expensive as they are in actual paper magic, but the play pieces shouldn't be where they yeah. try and gatekeepers. It shouldn't be two thirds of Nintendo Switch for a Switch for a standard deck. It should be, like we said, forty dollars, and then I can spend an additional hundred on my board. And people do it. Why yeah. are making more money than any other game company? Yep. Surely copying their strategy is good. Yeah, surely yeah. it is. Yeah, I mean, you look at a game like Legends of Runeterra in terms of the economy. I think everyone seems to agree Legends of Runeterra yeah, right. has the best economy, the best setup. It's a great game. It's so fun. Have you played it? I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. I'd go as far as to say the economy and how how giving it is a little bit overwhelming, which is a strategy for these kind of games where you log in, you play two games, and it's just bombarding you with boxes and and like this this essence I can build this from, and it's a bit messy in my opinion and it's overwhelming but that's a strategy to be like look how generous we are and it is generous if you move away the bells and whistles it is generous right but it's crazy the stuff they throw at you there's a niceness in a weird way that magic is like here's some gold not much of it but two two coins so uh right. you never get gems for anything really on rare right. occasion and then there's some packs that's right. kind of tidy if only got more packs and more yeah, i appreciate that i suppose but i don't appreciate how they do it well no. all right well, sure shift shift from from uh, a stick of vacuum cleaner in their pocket and suck till all you get is lint to a reasonable economy that focuses on monetization and not gate gatekeeping play and the reason you know, they ability. do it is their pr fixing for the blunders they've made right no oh, that's yeah. why they do it they're like they're like we've listened right we've, we've listened, listened. And we've actually listened and we take action. Not we've listened and we take no action, which I think is so, what they're going to do. This is so depressing. All right, you want to know my last one? Go on then. My last one is, again, thinking of Legends of Runeterra, I think there should be a single player versus environment story mode. Yes. Which again, we had that in duels. It was very popular. Mm -hmm. And this idea that, you know what, maybe I don't, like like there are people who are frustrated with behaviors like roping and emoting and if we add chat features, you know, other uh, antagonistic or stressful or unpleasant parts of 1v1 competitiveness. Let's face it, humans are jerks. We want to have a way to play against the environment, not just Sparky and also, mm -hmm. Imagine th cool things like exploring a map, having duels as you do oh. so, and, and story beats where we could have a story unfold. Imagine the quest to save Tamiyo as a mm -hmm. story that comes with the Kamigawa set or with the new Kapenna set. And the card's not revealed and the first person to complete that story in content on Twitter gets to reveal the card. Wow, oh. boy, that's some big brain thinking there, Kenobi. That'd be so good. That's some big brain I'm thinking. I'm really sad I didn't think of this because the yeah. Runeterra single player it's is amazing. so good. It's so fun, it's great. My wife loves to just yeah. sit and play through that it's one. It's a roguelike, people yeah. don't know. It's a, it's a card game with all the terror cards, but as you go, like in Jinx and the Arcane one, for example, you get uh, unlocks and it gets to tell you, do you want to get your creatures to have plus one attack? Or would you want all your spells to have minus one mana? Or whenever you cast a creature, gain a life. Right. Like that. Yeah, and you yeah, build yeah. this kit of extra abilities and then you play with voiced di dialogue in the mm -hmm. Arcane one. They're not all voiced, but that one is. And you, you bump into Vi, her stepsister, and then you go fight Jace. Yeah. And it's, uh, not that Jace. Not Jace. But it, imagine if. Imagine oh, if. Right, it's Jace. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was like, not Jace. And I was like, no, it is Jace. No, but it's not. Yeah, different Jace. Um, both obnoxious, actually, weirdly. Um, but imagine if, instead of all that silly money that I spent like Commander Legends game that had terrible everything, we had a map of Zendikar. They wanted to monetize the beta. <laughs> yeah. But you have a map of Zendikar, and right. you are moving through these things, and you meet Nissa, and she says some dialogue lines, and things happen, because the Jules one was good. Yeah. I still remember, it was in the final battle of Jules 2014, someone yeah. can correct me on the, num ne the, the, the year, you fight Nickel Boris at the end, and it's the only match in the game where arch enemy schemes come into play, yeah. and you don't know they're going to. So he comes That's in, there might a be a voice twist. line, arch enemy schemes, and then like it wraths your board, it blows up a land, and you're like, wow, yeah. this is a challenge. Cause what a concept. What a concept. What a concept. I, I, we were talking about how I played, I keep still wanting to say StarCraft 2, StarCraft 1 Brood War, the expansion, and I love. It's not called the, StarCraft 1 Brood War, the expansion. It's just called StarCraft Brood War. Thank you, Kenobi. No worries. Um, 
I loved the story mode in that. And I really, that actually helped teach me, here's a concept, taught me how to play the game so that I could understand how pieces worked was because that was like my little tutorial and it made the world come alive. I understood what was going on in the world, what the different factions were, what they were about, what their personalities were, all that stuff. And I loved it. And what was so cool is you played through it uh, and then you end up playing through it as the Zerg because one of the humans gets captured and yeah, turned into target, a Zerg. Yeah, yeah. And then and then it's like, that's the final thing. And you had been playing with her as your character and then you awaken as a Zerg and you're obeying the hive and you're looking to, it's so cool. And imagine that switch in a, I was just going to complete so can you Tamiyo, right? Tamiyo, right? Yeah. Oh my. And your next deck has got like That would be so cool. It. You got fixing obliterators as an option yeah. and you're like, why are these in my deck? And it's because you're now. Why can't, so. <laughs> Why can't they do it? Why? Why can't they do it? It's not, it's too easy to just say they're incompetent. A lot of these things aren't worth. There is a lot of, I, I think there's a lot of, in, I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, and and I think there is a lot of incompetence that doesn't get properly recognized and 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 replaced. But they, there's a lot of dead, I don't know. At, wh why? Okay, so well, it's maybe, not. maybe, no, that, that's, that's how, probably part of it. It's just a joke at this point. But some of this, there's probably just a different ethos of like, it is, and I mean this at a high level, not the front facing people of Wizards of the Coast that we see on social media love this game so much that they get excited about this sort of stuff too. So I don't think it's them doing this. I think it's people at a higher level being like, will this story mode make us money? Can you prove that? And I'm like, well. That's a ridiculous, short minded saying, no, attitude. I, I agree, I agree. But that's I why you'll never be Riot. That's executive. <laughs> yes. No, 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 but I'm actually going to say true. this. That is true, that is true. Executive who isn't watching this podcast, that's why you'll never be right. And I'm going to also be honest, the fact that you're not watching this podcast, the fact that you're not watching the other content that content creators are making, because all we do is complain, all we do is hate, all this, the, the fact that you dismiss criticism like that, the fact that oh, this and that and the next, that's why you won't be riot, because you're too busy to, 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 to do anything beyond just monetize it, just do this, just monetize the beta, just this no nut trading, the most extreme thing, and then go, it, it's just, it, it's so disappointing because I do love yeah. this game so much, and I did have such high hopes for Arena, and I was so disappointed along the way as Arena consistently failed, and when you see everything from that new Yu-Gi-Oh! client with 10,000 cards to, if you have not played Legends of Runeterra, go play Legends of Runeterra, it's one of the best, best games out there, and it sick. won't it's cost so you one so penny. Good. It won't cost you one penny unless you fall in love with it and want to start customizing the aesthetic. Check it out. I've got a video on it. You've got some Rune Terror videos, right? I've streamed it a little bit. Yeah. One video. I want, we'll I want link to do, it. We'll I will be doing more. Do we'll more. Do more. And the draft Show is your good friends. Too. It's the draft great. The mode is great. It's so depressing. Out of these, if you had to say one that is the most likely to happen, I'm going to say Pioneer. Most likely to happen. Well, it's, it's, we know Pioneer's coming. Oh, other well, than Pioneer, then. Yeah, yeah. We know, okay, other than Pioneer, what's the most likely to come? All of mine are so unlikely. Probably Gladiator, because the most least effort. Least effort. Yeah. That is sure. true. Like, the least like, effort. It's a gladiator make, button, gonna, and your a, deck is down. You can, yeah, right. You could just make a gladiator. Wouldn't it be cool if, like, I, as as a as a person with a following, or you as a person with a following, or just people who have a group of friends, like their game store, could like host events and set up rules for it. I could make a cube. This is what I want on Magic Online. Imagine if I could have made the Talarian cube and I could pay money to wizards to put prizes in it. I'd determine what the prize support was. You can if you're was. friends with the product manager. Oh, can I? <laughs> yeah. You're gonna get an angry email. <laughs> I probably am, but it's true. No, no, email. I, don't, I don't mean that in a harsh way. There have yeah. been cubes by creators on there who are people who have been friendly with or have got to at least put, talk to the product manager. Mm. And I know that for a, a fact, and that's not a harshness, it's true. And the cubes are good, so that's not, that's not shade. Yeah. But yeah, it, why not? Why aren't there tournaments? Why isn't there spectator mode for those tournaments? Why Ooh, isn't there? I'll give you a good one. I'm gonna end on an optimistic note. Talarian ends on an optimistic note here. That's There's one thing we didn't either. mention that I believe will come to Arena, will make Arena better, and will make everybody happy. I think we're going to get a full, full power cube on Arena because we already had like playing around with that, right? We yes, yeah, we had a cube. So we had a cube that didn't have Lotus and Sol, right? Even though they are on the climb, we know they're there for right. some of the events. So I think I think we're going to. Wouldn't that be fun? I think I think cube is probably a logical next step to get those cards into other things. To get things like they the vintage do. cube, the modern cube, yeah, to be able to do what Magic Online does with cubes, to put that on there and put those cards. And if you on haven't there. played cube, next time it's on Arena, well, they put money in. What, what was money, in the cube that they had? The big one. On a, on, on Arena. On Arena. Um, it was like all stuff from the current age. A few other because historic anthologies add a lot. Of, I, I believe they didn't do mocks, right? Theory. They didn't here's, do the mocks. Here's a theory, and I believe this is true. Um, this is this is borderline not a theory. But time. I'm correct that they didn't do the mocks. No, no. So they were. So there was some mocks, a Sol Ring, a Lotus in an Elspeth versus Ashiok 
event thing where you play. Yeah, but not in the cube. Not in the cube. I'm saying they're on the system. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. exist. The cards that are in the cube tend to be the things that were added in Historic Horizons. So my theory is that they were going to do a cube. They started as a passion project, perhaps. They're like, oh, this is cool. Yeah. yeah. What are we doing with those? How are they monetize? Oh, we'll put Sisse and all these other cards like cube staples into Horizons. So there was a cube with loads of really cool old cards in it, like Elish Norm was in there and stuff, but they were added already in Historic Anthologies. Yeah. So there's loads of cool I stuff. Remember El- I remember Elish. Yeah, there's, there's Praetors. Elish was in the cube. Not in the, I don't mean the, the 1v1 thing that had the Moxes. I meant yeah. the cube itself yeah, yeah. had Elish, right? Yes, correct. I, I remember that. I was only I got bringing that, that up as a point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was really there. cool. But I, I, my, my thing is, is let's Actually, do the full power cube. Dude, that event is close to what we're asking for with the storyline thing, but with a bit, bit more expanded. That was a cool event. You're it playing was. as Elspeth, and then you you didn't know what was in the decks, I think, when you started playing, and you draw a Mox Pearl, and you're like, wow, we're playing a really cool, interesting that game. Was, that was cool, too. Powerful I liked that. I liked yes, that. Why cube, don't they do that more? <laughs> yeah, when was the last time we had a story moment one? <laughs> When was the last time we had a story? The Elspeth thing, I think. I think so. I think so. It's a shame. It is a shame. So. No, no, no joke at the end. Honestly, it's just a, it's here. It's just a shame. Yeah. Good night. <laughs>